Yo, what is going on, ladies and gentlemen? It's your boy, Gripper. If that is right, the title of this video is what you're seeing right now. Fanatics has sued Panini. That is right. In this video, we're going to be talking about the new countersuit just filed today against Panini. Of course, as you guys know, this is an ongoing saga. The next chapter has been written. We're going to talk all about it in this video to the best of our ability. A couple articles out there so far. Not much, but the bread and butter is right in front of me. So we're going to talk all about it. But before we get into that, thank you guys so much for joining me on this video today. Can we get a minimum of 100 likes on today's video? As that is the best way you can help me grow this channel is by hitting that like button. And speaking of growing the channel, we're doing a giveaway. We're giving away hobby packs of Series 2. All you got to do to enter is be publicly subscribed, like this video, turn on the post notifications for all the content you see on this channel, and last but certainly not least, leave a comment in the comment section on who your all-star representatives were on your favorite team. I'll pick the winner once we hit 7,000 subscribers, so there is that. And one last thing, of course, looking for cut cards in Chrome. Want to keep this short because this is a long article I'm going to read. So if you guys have any parallels of Andy McCutcheon in Chrome card number 92, that'd be greatly appreciated as I will buy them off you. If the, if the price is right, I will buy them because I'm trying to get as many as I possibly can. So there is that. And I'm not going to waste any more time. I'm not going to waste any more time in this video. Um, I had a video scheduled for today. I am recording this video Monday morning. It's, it's currently 1130, um, an hour and a half before this video goes live. Hopefully I can get this video up at one o'clock. I think I can. Um, I had a whole other video scheduled for today, but this huge bombshell came out. Luckily, I had my ESPN notifications on all for all for all like stories and news or else I would have probably never even seen this. Um, so yeah, uh, so I, as soon as I woke up, literally, I, I woke up like literally 15 minutes ago and I was thinking to myself, do I do this today or do I do this tomorrow? I was like, well, let's do this today because this is the current news and this news is of course more important. So we're going to talk about platinum chrome in today's video, uh, but obviously that'll be tomorrow. So it looks like the watch before you buy video for platinum chrome is going to be canceled unless we could kind of do like a two in one on on wednesday which we might do uh but we'll definitely be doing top five or top ten most valuable players um in platinum chrome so just stay tuned for that of course but this this is way more important so that's why i'm doing this today so this article just published at 10 p.m by espn by dan hodge h-a-j hadducky i don't know it's it's um Weird last name. So, Dan, this article is written by Dan of ESPN. Title of this reads, Fanatics Files Countersuit to Panini's America's Antitrust Lawsuit. So, this article is pretty lengthy, so bear with me here. And we'll, of course, dissect this um, as I read and after I read. So, let's go. In response to Panini America's filing of an antitrust lawsuit against Fanatics in Florida District Court on Thursday, Fanatics has countersued in Southern District of New York. So these two lawsuits are going to be taking place in two different places. Keep that in mind. Panini America, the company that currently has league and players union licenses to produce NBA and NFL trading cards, alleged that Fanatics acquired tops in early 2022 after winning future MLB exclusive rights in late 2021 has quote unquote created an entirely new monopoly spanning multiple leagues and multiple players associations in the industry. Scroll down. Fanatics in response is seeking damages and other appropriate relief in order to remedy Panini's unfair uh, comp uh, competition tutorous. I think I said that right. Um, interference with business relations and breach of duty to negotiate in good faith. Panini has had the exclusive licenses produce NBA cards 
since the 2009-2010 season in the NFL card since 2016. Panini's union deal with the NFL and the NBA expire in 2025 and 2026, like I said with the NFL license. Um, respectively, Fanatics has 20-year deal in place with the NFLPA starting in 2026 and will also become the exclusive license to NBA cards, which deal is in place with the leagues and unions the same year. So it looks like 2025, January 1st, 2025, is the year, or actually 2026. It looks like 2026. I thought it was 2025, so something must have happened there. Um, so it looks like 2026 is the year for both tops to do football and basketball for right now, but we'll talk about that in a little bit. So starting in 2026, we'll become the exclusive licensee of NBA cards with the deal in place with the league and the union the same year. A source from Fanatics confirmed Thursday that the league's rights with the NFL have been signed. So as of now, if nothing changes, NFL and NBA cards, tops, 2026. The sports trading card industry is expected to eclipse $60 billion in 2027. In its lawsuit, Panini alleged it was not, quote-unquote, given an opportunity to bid or otherwise compete with the license Fanatics acquired, quote-unquote, and only learned about Fanatics' exclusive agreement after they were uh, consumed or consummated or confirmed, essentially, through reading about them in the media. So, uh, basically, Panini had no clue that they did this, essentially. In the countersuit filed Monday, Fanatics alleged that Panini's licensing deals neared expiration. Licensors, unsurprisingly, chose Fanatics Collectibles as their new license that would commit long-term to the business, as Panini America has, quote-unquote, openly been trying to sell the business for a decade. Fanatics has also alleged that Panini America didn't acquire the current licenses via bidding. Panini bought Donner's Playoff in 2009 and took over that company's NFL and NBA licenses. So essentially, Fanatics is telling you that they didn't have a fair shot of acquiring the licenses. So this is why they're essentially doing this. Panini alleged that Fanatics CEO Michael Rubin approached Panini this May to quote-unquote to threaten that Fanatics would no longer supply Panini with any jerseys for Panini to offer the customers as elements of its trading cards, a.k.a. relic cards, of course, and would not stop its pressure campaign against Panini and would continue to sign exclusive deals and players. Of course, as you guys know, um, Topps has been trying to sign like exclusive rights to football and basketball players, like, uh, for example, Victor Wambayana. Um, of course, as you guys know, he has a ton of autographs by Tops already. Um, so that is just one example. But yeah, so essentially what, if you guys are unaware, they have been trying to do, they have been trying to like, um, sign. So that way, when it comes to Panini, they can have autographs in Panini sets. That's what they've been trying to do. Next paragraph, a source of Fanatics told ESPN on Thursday that the company has been engaged in conversation with Panini for a year to transfer the rights it had one earlier than the NBA and NFL deals expiration. So th that is where we have heard the 2025 thing right here. Let me read that again. A source at Fanatics told ESPN on Thursday that the company has been engaged in conversations with Panini for over a year to transfer its rights as one before the deals expirations. So yeah, the 2025 thing and the early 2024 thing were true at one point, but it looks like that has fallen through and Panini said F off essentially. That's essentially what happened. Fanatics lawsuit said that a deal in principle to terminate the license early was in place in spring of 2022 with a target effective date of July 31st, 2022. So they were trying to get NFL and NBA cards out this year by this article, which is crazy because obviously that didn't happen. The uh, they here's the next paragraph, quote unquote, they gave numbers that were inflated by 200 million a year on profits. The source said, alleging that Panini threatened a lawsuit if the deal wasn't completed. Next paragraph, Th that allegation um, appears in Fanatic suit, quote unquote, Panini owners embarked on a protracted, unlawful, and un uh, deceitful campaign of unfair trade practices, strong arm tactics, and uh, tutorous misconduct to hamper Fanatics collectibles. Um, 
nascent business. There's a lot. There's a lot of weird words in here. Businesses in hopes to force a deal, and when that failed, switched tactics and began campaign of harassment in the courts. So essentially, what they're saying here is since Panini had no, I guess, will to to acquire or to do these licenses, they switched their business tactic to suing tops. That's what it sounds like here. Fanatic suit alleges that Panini bought suits against at will former employees without non-compete restrictions who took jobs at Fanatic. So essentially what this paragraph is telling us that a lot of people jumped ship. So a lot of people who worked at Panini jumped ship to Fanatics. Fanatics and had threatened to do the same with others. Fanatics consented to a quote-unquote contemporary injunction barring several former Panini employees from uh, recruiting others away using confidential information. In Monday's suits, Fanatics called the antitrust allegations in Florida factually inaccurate, legally incoherent, and ultimately upside down. At the time of this publication, Panini America could not be reached for a comment. On Thursday, a fanatic source told the company believes it is one of its deals, quote-unquote, fair and square at one at a time. And the last thing here is our perspective is all the claims are baseless. A source said, we do what in the best interest of the collector in the hobby industry long term, which that last statement there is uh, kind of a little sus, but I will let that one slide for now. So, as we just read the article here, ESPN from Dan, great article. Um, if you guys want to read it for yourself, I'm not the best reader, and I should have worn I should have worn my glasses because the print is like super small on my computer. I should have probably brought my glasses with me, but like I said, I just woke up not really thinking straight right now. But yeah, so there it is, right? There is the information. So essentially, what Tops did was just countersue, right? They countersued, although in a different state and a different county, which I guess you could do. I didn't even know you could do that. Like for some legal cases, like if it's like person versus person, I think you have to be in the same county. Um, but I guess if it's company versus company, I guess you could do a counter sue in any county in the world, I guess, which is news to me. I didn't know that. But essentially, Tops is trying to get what is theirs, essentially. So like I said the other day when we talked about this, Panini trying to sue Tops. Because all they want to do is keep the NBA and NFL licenses. Because they claim Tops has a monopoly. Which, if you want to look at it, I'm trying not to be biased here as possibly as I as I can. But that is true. Like, Tops, once they acquired those licenses, would definitely, no doubt about it, become a monopoly. Because what would have happened with Panini football and basketball, as we've seen with baseball cards already would have no active players and no logos. So it would be like college players, essentially, which they already have a set for, essentially, as well, and Hall of Famers and retired players through the NFL and NBA. So, yeah, what Panini is trying to sue them for is legally correct. But here we are today with an anti-suit or a, a counter-suit, in this case, from Tops or Fanatics, trying to say they negotiated these deals fair and square and that the NFL and NBA respectively both went to Fanatics themselves and got out of that deal to go with Tops. Because obviously, they probably saw, I'm just trying to make a guess here, it didn't say in the article, um, we might know more down the line, they probably thought to themselves, we're probably going to be more profitable at Tops. So let's ditch this Panini deal when we can and go over to Tops. That is probably exactly what happened. Now, is that what happened? I don't know. But I'm just taking a guess. Because obviously, I mean, Tops has a lot more going than Panini. They just do. Right? Panini, if you guys are unaware, like I said, lost the MLBPA licensing this year. So. As far as I'm concerned, with baseball cards for, for Panini, useless. 
um, the WWE license they lost, WWE license they literally just got last year, is going back to tops January 1st, 2024. So that's gone. Now they're losing the NFL and NBA licenses in 2026, which the article did point out that they were trying to get it a lot sooner. As we, of course, I've been saying for a long time, my local card guy said 2025. Obviously, that ain't happening now, but it says in the article, they tried with Panini. They negotiated a deal, but the deal fell through because Panini said, well, what's that mean for us? <laughs> Nothing. Well, let's go to court. That's probably the case. And it's very, very interesting because this is getting crazier and crazier by the day. It really has. So we started out with a lawsuit on Thursday. We started out with a Panini comment. I couldn't find a Topps comment. And I, I even said in that video, if you guys watch that video, I said on Monday, we are going to hear some news about this. And sh unshockingly enough, we heard news on Monday morning. This is getting crazier and crazier by the day. I honestly don't know what to make of it. When this case goes to court, and now there's going to be two court trials, essentially, because like I said, they countersued it in a different state, in a different county, which I didn't even know you could do. So there's going to be two trials now, not one, but two. And let's say Topps loses the first one. Well, the second one, by theory, can reverse that. That's why they did that. Because if the judge in, I believe it was Florida, where I read uh, they, they sued in Florida, if Topps loses in Florida, that's what the countersuit is for. Because they could take it to New York. And if the judge in New York deems that the judge in, in, in Florida was unlawful and, I guess, not split down the middle as, as what a judge should do, then they could counter-reverse. And at the end of the day, Tops can walk away with the licenses because of this countersuit. So, this is very unprecedented. I know people in the comments were like, something with with uh, Tops and I think it was Upper Deck or something in like 1981. This has taken a whole new turn of insanity it has from counter suits and there's gonna be more believe me however this ends and whenever it ends because this is not gonna end anytime soon i said this when we first initially talked about this this court date although it's not set in stone yet i'd have to imagine starts about a year from now i, I mean i don't know um big Lawsuits like this usually take a lot of time to collect evidence. That's what that's what lawyers from each company are doing right now. They're collecting evidence to go against and for their, their support. So it's going to be a while before this actually takes place in a courtroom. But I'll tell you what. Once this actually goes to court, I probably am going to be doing like live coverage like via live stream or something talking about this as it happens come I'm, I'm imagining what's going to happen is i don't think they're allowed the video in the courtroom unless it's like a a criminal case but there's going to be live updates like there was with the activision and and sony thing just not too long ago so we'll be doing live updates i'm probably going to be doing like a live stream of some sort like i said this is probably like a year away or so so it's not anytime soon um but this is going to be interesting man like if panini wins they get to keep what they have but at the same time if the judge deems necessary, they could also make it so that both companies can get everything. So I don't know how that's going to work because obviously contracts are in place, deals are made, so on and so forth. But if Topps wins it all, this is the end of Panini. Like, here's how I describe it. Panini right now is on their last stand. This is their last ditch effort because if they lose, if they lose for one. If the judge in New or in Florida, the first uh, lawsuit, if the first lawsuit doesn't go the way of Panini, there is no case for the second case because it would make no sense at that point, right? But if Panini loses, this is the end of Panini. The Panini as we know it is gone. So this, in my eyes, is why they're doing this is to protect the integrity and longevity of their company. Because if they lose in Florida, which is the first case, because by law, I think, 
the first count or the first lawsuit has to go first in the case. So that's the first case, right? And then they'll go to New York and do the second one if necessary. But if that judge in in Florida deems it just whatever and deems it in, in the case of tops, that's the end of Panini. Panini is dead at that point, which depending on who you ask, love it or hate it, I mean, I really don't care for Panini cards. I, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't. I'm not a football or basketball collector. Now, if I was a football or basketball collector, I might have a different opinion on this, but probably not by much. I always thought, like, although the inserts, I will say, the inserts on Panini's cards are a lot better than Topps by a long shot. There's no de there's no debate on that. Um, I will say, like, in terms of sets, I do think Topps is a little bit better, I, I think, because there's just so many different sets. Um, and, and another thing I don't like with Panini is they just like delay products like all the time. Like, you know, I bitch about tops delays all the time, like with Platinum Chrome, for example. But they delay products like six months at a time. So they're very unorganized over there. Um, but like I said, I'm not really a, a basketball or football collector, so I, I really don't care. But my brother is, and I hear about it all the time. That's why I can give a little bit of insight on this. Because my brother collects football cards. He's a big football guy. And he tells me all the time they delay stuff. Like, they're, like, still producing 2022 products. And the 2023 season is literally just about to begin next month. So, it's insane, man. So, hopefully you guys did enjoy this video. That's pretty much all I got to say. We're going to open a pack here uh, of Chrome. It's it's wild, man. Like, this, this shit's wild, man. I'm going to be honest. It's wild. Like, we, like everyone was saying we've seen a case like this before with in, in 1981. But I'll tell you what, man. With this news today, it has taken a whole new turn. Like, seriously... This lawsuit has taken a, a whole new turn. I don't even know what to think of it at this point. It's just, it's it's wild. It's wild at the end of the day. I mean, there's no other way to put it. So let's see here what we got. Open, is this another three-card pack? No, it's a four-card pack. Okay. We're still looking for our autograph. We're about, like, almost halfway through. About halfway, I think. And we still get to get our autograph. So uh, we have Corbin Burns on the front. We're still looking for Acuna, by the way. And a lot of good rookies. We have Eloy Jimenez. We have... Who is that? Luis Castillo. So this pack's kind of mid. Let's see here. Does this card, whatever this card is, save the pack? I saw it was upside down, so let's flip it over. Freddie Freeman. I mean, not bad. Definitely a respectable player. He's doing well this year, so I'm not going to complain. But that pack... I said this, well, I'll, I'll say this in tomorrow's video. My base cards, like when it comes to base cards in this box, have been awful. I mean, maybe that's because I got a lot of good parallels. Like seriously, I, I, I kid you not, I have not had one base pack yet. I don't know if base packs are possible in Chrome Hobbies. I think they are. I have not gotten one yet. It's been refractors, prisms, parallels, and a couple inserts. So I've actually had a decent box, but... The base cards, the base cards I've gotten so far have not been that good. Like, I got a couple good rookies, which, I mean, are not bad. And I got a, a Shohei Otani card, which, buyback, obviously, but I don't know. But, guys, that is it for this video. Thank you guys so much for joining me on this video. What do you make of this lawsuit? This is just, it's getting crazy, man. It, it, keep, it keeps getting crazy, man. I don't know what else to really say. Um, of course, every step of the way of this lawsuit, both lawsuits now, we're going to cover it, and we're going to see what happens. So, guys, thank you guys so much for joining me, and I'll see you guys in tomorrow's video.